This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. Okay, we're going to go over a lot. And before I do, let's go ahead and call the numbers because we have a lot to cover today. And I really do want to, I, I, I think this is an amazing time to get back into this information. It's some information we've covered for a long time here. And let's go ahead and do the numbers. The numbers this morning are brought to you by I Trust Capital the best place to get a crypto IRA or a gold IRA, just $50 over spot. I use them. I love them. And they are an amazing group of people. Make sure you check them out. It is a great way to invest in the crypto that can get you either tax deferred or tax free. So make sure to check them out. Right now, we're looking at Bitcoin at 10,287.31. Ethereum is 354.80. And XRP is 24 cents this morning. It's a fire sale, ladies and gentlemen. There's a blue light special on aisle 24, and it's XRP. All right, let's drill down on the number 0 0.2405. Market cap is 10 billion eight. That is down. Man, we are looking at 24 hour uh 24-hour volume right now is down 2.6%. We are at 2.3 billion, and the total circulating supply, which changed and came up last week, is 45 billion, 11 million plus. Those are your numbers. Okay, let's get into this thing. So right now, we're going to look. We're, this, let me just tell you what we're going to unfold here. For one, yes, at 24 cents. I'm about to take you on a path that I believe takes XRP to thousands of dollars. And I believe by the end of the video, you'll either be convinced that it is or you'll realize that I've made a damn strong case for it. Now, when will that happen? It's not up to me. But I'll tell you something. There is there's a very, very key fundamental when you're an investor. And it doesn't matter if you're investing in gold, stocks, crypto, no matter real estate, it doesn't matter. It's knowing what you hold. That's a key, key, key fundamental. And the only way to do that is to really understand what the investment is. And I think we're going to walk down that road today. So before we get going, let's look at this. So. Coca-Cola Bottling Company invests in digital asset payments for vending machines. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. You know, last year when we were filming Krypton Airs last October in Las Vegas, I was talking to Brad from the Litecoin Foundation, and shout out to him. Uh, he was... Really, really a huge help and just a great guy. Has an amazing insight on the crypto space. He said something very key when we were interviewing him for the uh, documentary, as long as well as Charlie Lee and so many other people. <laughs> he said, you know, in three years, you won't be able to get a hold of me. And you know why? Because the Coca-Colas and the Pepsis and all the other major companies will be in this game. It will no longer be us as retail investors and speculators in this market. This game is going to get so big that it becomes the way the world works. Just like the internet. That's exactly the moment we're in. And you see it unfolding right here with Coca-Cola bringing investing into digital asset payments for vending machines. Remarkable, remarkable moment right there. Mainstream financial services like Visa, PayPal, and MasterCard are rushing to fill the digital payments void and be one of the first to offer crypto payment cards, stated experts in the crypto industry. Here is another piece of validation showing you that they are moving to integrate the digital asset world into the traditional side of the markets through these companies, Visa and PayPal and MasterCard. 
Coca-Cola. It is all working together. And this is really a moment to recognize. Now, we're going to change gears in a second. So Ripple Connection, this is from Michael Val Five Links, and shout out to everybody that sent the information here today. Uh, no matter who you are, you guys are very valuable to this space. Ripple Connection, 2016 integration with Ripple Protocol and the Temenos Core Banking Software using the Bluezell Al Altitude Gateway technology. Bluezell launches DeFi-focused Oracle solution. Now, I just covered this again last week showing you guys how deep the connections with Ripple and the major players of the world are. Shout out to Bank XRP for this video. And the reality is, is that the connections are so deep across the world to the largest players of the world. This has exactly been the plan of Ripple all along, is to connect with the largest banks, financial institutions, payment providers, to be able to incentivize them with this currency with this digital asset for use at some point in the future that even though they aren't using it fully today for settlement at this current point, you can clearly see that they have been doing the work to connect the mar market infrastructure and the new financial system to one another via third party or directly so they will be able to. You can't drive the car until you got a road. You know, in the early days, when the car was first invented, they actually had created some laws that you had to walk in front of the car because there was no real roads to drive on. They were all thoroughfares where you had horse and buggy and wagons, and there was a lot of deep ruts in the road, which were not suitable for the car. So they actually passed laws that you had to walk out in front of the car with flat, two guys with a flag to be able to let people know that there was a car coming, right? It's ridiculous. That's a, that's a great example of how legislation got the cart in front of the horse and stymied for a short period of time the innovation, that the tech that was in front of us. We don't want to see that happen again. And you have to understand that that is the moment we're in in this digital age. We don't want to see the tech stymied because of legislation that's been brought on too soon. However, I do believe it has been no mistake to why we have seen no classification, no designation of what XRP is and Bitcoin, Ethereum get a pass. I think that is soon to change. I also believe things like antitrust laws, which we covered here yesterday, and I'll just briefly cover this because it goes to the narrative of what we're talking about today. Stay with me, folks. I think you're going to love where we're going because I'm not kidding about understanding that XRP has the potential to be worth thousands of dollars, and I believe that it will. The U.S. antitrust chief says protecting blockchain from competitive abuses is top priority. You better believe it is. Somebody could create a monopoly with blockchain and distributed ledger technology and then shut everyone else out or be the gatekeeper. Well, oh, well, we can't have that. And then you say to yourself, yeah, but Ripple is actually designed to be that highway. It's designed to be the XRP ledger, the universal ledger for the world. Couldn't that, in fact, make them a gatekeeper? You're exactly right. And that's why I believe Ripple as a blockchain infrastructure company needs to IPO to fully decouple from the work and the development of the XRP ledger and the XRP asset that they've done. I also believe that antitrust laws could play that buffer that says, you know, OK, maybe you can have the six plus billion that you hold as a company and now you're just a customer and a user of this asset just as everyone else who has participated in incentivizing the network. But the reality is, is the decentralized XRP ledger and the XRP token, I believe, becomes systemically important financial market utility to the world, not only the United States of America. Let's take a look at this information here. 980 million XRP and 17,000 XRP accounts have already been set up to claim Spark. 
64 million XRP holdings increased, and 3,757 new XRP accounts have been created. Shout out to Flare and everything they're doing there. Stay with me here, because it's like, okay, well, what has Flare got to do with what you're saying about SIFMuse? and systemically important financial market utilities, which is a designation that can be made internationally, and it's a designation that can be made here in the United States by the Dodd-Frank rule or act uh, under the U.S. Treasury regulatory bodies. The reason I bring this up is because Flare Network is a utility fork. It is about driving the utility to a new network with the use and the benefit of XRP and Avalanche consensus and the benefits of building a two-way bridge to the Ethereum network. Let's keep going for a second. Stay with me. We also know, and I'm going to come back to Flare in a second, but just know that there is a huge migration to the Flare network, and I think it's exciting. I have not myself taken advantage of that yet because I know I still have some time to do so. And it's not that I'm skeptical. There are some questions that I have that I do want to see answered. But the reality is, is that I don't have to move it just yet, so I haven't done so. And I don't want to move my holdings from one exchange to another exchange that does offer Spark and then find out a week later that they end up offering it on the exchange that I've moved off of. So I'm just giving it a little time. So when you think about Ripple and the ledger, and we're going to come back to Flare, but just listen, be, stay with me here. So let's listen to this clip from Real XRP Boy for a second. It's just a little less than a minute here. And it's a reminder the diagram and what they're saying is a reminder of what Ripple has been building and what its use case utility is, which is not widely being used yet. And remember, we do not have price discovery on this digital asset. That's why it's 24 cents. Complements a fiat currency. The payments being made are still in fiat currency, still Canadian dollars to Philippine peso. Uh, however, they're using... XRP just as a tool to source that liquidity. So XRP in this lens, it complements fiat currency. When we think about other virtual currencies, say Bitcoin, for instance, that's a tool that's being used to replace fiat currency. So the consumer would take this currency and use it to buy its coffee with instead of using the central bank's currency. So that, that approach becomes inherently competitive with the central bank's own currency. With XRP, we've taken that similar technology and applied it in a way that complements fiat currency, help bank, helps banks source currency. In the and there you have it. And they're showing you in the diagram how XRP sits in the middle like a pinwheel, like a spoken wheel, right? So it's a complement to the already fiat currencies of the world and the system. I think you guys get it. I just want to show it because of where we're going. Stay with me. Here's another diagram from Jack the Rippler. Ripple's Opportunity, largest global payment service. You see the payment destination with Ripple in the middle of it, just like I showed you here with Temenos, right? Just like I showed you here with Temenos. Let's go back to this. So Bank of America, PayPal, FXL, and then uh, Wall Street, CLS, Visa, Swift, all of this sits in the middle of this destination of settling things in a new efficient way with this new technology with this new financial system, with these new payment rails. Ripple, shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf, Ripple has been leading a prominent, or proponent, been a leading proponent, excuse me, of the ISO 2022 to enable interoperability and improve customer experience for payments. ISO 2022 is in 70 countries it is estimated that 80%, 87% of global financial transactions will be supported by ISO 2022 by 2023. Could even be sooner. Coming back to the 980 million XRP and 17,000 XRP accounts have already been set up to claim the Spark token. What I want to focus on for a second is the Flare Network and the fact that it is a utility fork. 
And I think it is a driver. And I think even as according to what was said um, by Brad Garlinghouse, is that it gets the best of Avalanche consensus. It gets the best of XRP's utility. It gets the best of Ethereum smart contracts. Flair had said it was building the interoperable bridge between XRP and Ethereum ecosystem. And in doing so, you are able to mint FXRP on the Ethereum network, pegged one-to-one from the Flair network, because your XRP is there. This would allow you to interoperate with the Ethereum network without suffering, as I understand it to this point, all of the negative side of the gas fees and charges of the Ethereum network. So if that, in fact, is correct, in this respect alone, you're looking at the ability to use the Ethereum railroad tracks without having to pay to sit in their car. It's pretty remarkable. Okay. Now, this is a couple videos that I pulled up because we're going to talk about this for a second here. The IMF has recommended RippleNet to be systemically important financial market infrastructure. Basically, SIF Muse. And there's a couple of videos, and if you just go here in the search box and you type systemically, you will get a list of things that I've covered over the past several months that will show you that this is a very, very real thing. The Federal Reserve can designate things as systemically important financial market utilities or financial market infrastructures. The U.S. Treasury and the regulatory bodies can do the same exact thing. The IMF in this video here, which I will just click on for a second to show you, is done the same suggestion here. And let me just get this open so you can see the diagram where it talks about recommending RippleNet in the PDF from the IMF and how uh, payment inf- payment infrastructures have not been designated as systemically important by the FSOC, which is a regulatory agency from the U.S. Treasury, the Financial Stability Oversight Council. In processing payments with annual values of trillions of dollars through multilateral arrangements in a common rule book, then it talks about RippleNet is designed as a wholesale payment system. Then we have... And let me find this so I I bring this up properly here because then we have a document here I want to show you from Mickey B. He shared this in the Digital Perspectives uh, Telegram group. You guys can join that down below at the DAI group. It will give you access to two different Telegram groups. Let me read this to you. This is from MIT, okay? Okay. They have been working on creating a digital dollar. When the Federal Reserve Bank system identifies a function that has systemic implications such as large value transactions, it does not have a problem with taking the lead on establishing infrastructure that benefits all participants. Fedwire is the precedent that paves the way for the future similar actions. So true conversation becomes... Does the Fed identify digital currency as similarly important or not? Or perhaps not yet. Currently, Fedwire, the real-time gross settlement system that 9,200-plus members' institutions use to transact large values, offers instant settlement, irrevocable transactions. It is designed to be highly resilient, and most of all, it works well, averages $3 trillion in transfers each day, and it does so by being owned by the Federal Reserve Bank system. This means the bar for value brought by any digital currency would be fairly high, as it would have to build significantly significantly on existing functionality available. Those two directions would be either to extend the participants to more than 9,200 members' participants today or 
make the system more efficient for small transactions. There are both important value propositions uh, that would significant bring that would add significant value to the economy. It would, however, to be an uphill battle to convince the Fed that it would need to assume a leading role in this space. Another alternative model would be one deployed by the Fed wire competitors chips, which is privately owned by a small number of banks. Although because it is designated as a systemically important financial market utility or SIFMU, it does receive heightened regulatory scrutiny by the Federal Reserve Board, given how strong the interest displayed by the financial institutions is and by the way they've formed a consortia to investigate blockchains. It is possibly that one or more of these consortia that works on digital currencies becomes prominent. In that case, they'll be designated as a SIFMU. And the Fed gets scrutiny rights. To some extent, it's a model that has more promise for the Fed as it would stand to benefit from the innovation from the private sector and only support systems that have proven indispensable. Yet another version of the model would be to establish a new bank, to be to establish a new bank, that establishes an account with the Federal Reserve and sets up a digital currency at parity with the U.S. dollar. All other banks, wallet providers, would then have accounts at this new type of bank, and that would provide the vehicle for money to move faster via blockchains. This is the model pursued by MIT's Digital Currency Group, and it has the main advantage that can be tested out quickly without having a central bank needing to take major decisions. It shows promise in that it does not need major commitments from the Fed, as well as the fact that it can be opened up to stakeholders of all types, merchants, not necessarily financial institutions. Shout out to Mickey B. Fresh for this screenshot right here. We ha we ha we have seen the conversation where it has been encouraged by many different people, Chris John, Chris John Carlo and many others, that there be a public private relationship. Even Brian Brooks from the US OCC, the Office of Comptroller of Cash, clearly stating that we need to have public and private relationship because waiting till 23, 24 is not acceptable. We need to be leading because there's already countries in the world that are way ahead of us at this point. And if they were to adopt a public-private relationship with someone like Ripple, in a matter or a span of five to eight weeks, this is ready to go. And in fact, I happen to personally believe that it is already ready to go. And when I start looking at things like the Flare Network, I ask myself, not only is the Flare Network a potential to bring together all these internet protocols to act as a federated unit or a, a federated system, just as the internet protocols operate in harmony today. But I also have to ask myself, is this about clearing the XRP ledger from a lot of retail use and holding so it can gain the SIFMU designation or SIFME and be deemed a systemically important financial market infrastructure so it can be used because the reality is it isn't just about using the token it's actually about using the ledger this isn't about the railroad car this is about the railroad tracks if the world is going to use this for payment and we know that the Bank of America's, the J.P. Morgan's, all of them are in bed some way or another. The Temenos's, right? Everyone is connected some way, directly or indirectly. Isn't this about having the new payment rails 
adopted as systemically important. All of the people at this level have the utility and liquidity alike between themselves to provide the price of the token. What's at stake here is the railroad tracks, the new payment rails. This would address liability issues. At what point am I liable as the sender or receiver on these payment rails? When I hit the button, I go back to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau just recently in July, made a rule effective that for the first time, you be able as a sender and receiver to see the cross-border transaction before you accept the payment and hit send. The two solutions cited for that were GPI from SWIFT and Ripple and XRP. That, at the end of the day, is how I believe we get to thousands of a dollar XRP in the blink of an eye. And when I see something as, as exciting as Flare Network, I see it working as twofold. One, on the front side, I see it working to integrate the different networks to make them all interoperable and to get the best out of one another by working them together in a convergence, in a federated way. Two, potentially what I also see is the ability to free up the ledger so it can go on to its absolute designation and its really final destination of where it needs to be, which is a universal ledger to the largest institutions of the world. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. I'll catch all of you on the next one. Share with somebody you know. Talk to you soon.